Bottom left hand corner, we have the uh. purple Zerg. It is Liquid Chef. Bottom right hand position, we have Combat Easy. But he, is, of course, is Puzzle, as you guys can see. From he is the Team orange Slayer. Protoss. Yes. And it's really funny because Chef in the lobby was like, oh, this is slightly demeaning. I should get on my account Deezer. Or Deezer Easier, or something like that. It was really, really funny. It was just going on and on and on. And Puzzle just kept get like, uh, what? Like, what are you saying? And then <laughs> I don't think uh, Puzzle knows too much about Combat X. But then it's just funny because Combat X also played Protoss. So. But guys, yeah, this is uh, Shakur's Plateau once again. Pylon on the low ground. Very, very, very common to go for some sort of quick nexus, whether it be the nexus before the forge or a forge and a cannon before. And it depends yeah. on what he's scouting, but very quick scout here. Yeah, this is all puzzle. pretty standard play. Mm -hmm. Let's go into uh, a little about this map and what we were talking about, two base, okay. and how it's very powerful. Movement yes. is the name of the game mm -hmm. on this map in particular. Zergs normally want to take their third over here. Once you take your third, you can see a lot of distance between. It means that if they want to connect their bases, they need to give up a larva inject, or at least one larva inject. Now, they could get additional queens, but it does severely hamper their drone count. That is three drones right there, which mm -hmm. is 120 minerals per minute. So doing that is kind of tough, but uh, the name of the game, as I said, is movement. If you take your third over here, well, all of a sudden, if I attack the main and the third at the same time, it's very hard to position units to, one, defend against each of them, and two, to just to get back and forth, because I can have the main army in the main, and then a little strike force at the third, and you're in a really tough position if you are the Zerg player. Where do I actually defend? Do I give up a base? How how far are they committing to this pressure? Yep, and so that will come into play, especially considering the fact that because the, the natural is so tight as well, and it's so accessible from, oh, the main ramp is so accessible from the natural that force fields can be extremely powerful um, with force field timings. Exactly. And we, I mean, we've seen some Shakur's Plateau games, um, PVZ, the, the, I mean, we saw earlier today between White, White Raw and Marl, we also saw, you know, Cruncher Procedure on this map as well. Um, and the idea is that Protoss generally can turn on 2-base for a very, very long time, and then eventually start expanding, maybe even in the, the Delta formation, take it close to the Watchtower, and make it even harder for Zerg to really attack. Um, and so there's going to be moments where Sheth is going to have to pick off where Puzzle's most vulnerable, but generally Puzzle is just really aggressive in PvZ and never giving Zerg a break. And Sheth has to know that. Last time they met up in Cody, it was a very similar story. Will it turn out again for series in NASL Season 3? I like what Sheth is doing. You might wonder what he's doing with the Zerglings right now. He's just checking for that probe to see if it's anywhere around here. He does not want a proxy pylon in his or near his base, I should say because that obviously gives him the agency to do a lot of damage, whether it be a proxy for warped in units. But from here, we know that puzzle is just going for the, abs the absolute standard um, build that he could possibly do. He is just teching up, getting double gas, and continuing on with the cybernetics core. Now, this is where normally it starts to diverge. He starts to choose what he wants to do as his first 100 gas comes up here, and there it is. Plus one weapons attack mm -hmm. will be initiated right away, whereas Rotterdam would do straight away. So he's probably doing some sort of four gate timing. Yeah, this is um, uh, really good with okay. Zealots initially, but. I have to readjust my statement. He oh, has the okay. capacity to do a four gate timing. Ah, right. But that doesn't necessarily mean he will do it. <laughs> what he's saying is okay, I'm showing that mm. I'm getting a very fast plus one attack. Mm -hmm. Off of this, Sheth normally says, okay, I need to get slightly faster units because a plus one attack timing is imminent. Maybe roaches, spine crawlers, etc. That could just put a lot of pressure onto Sheth unnecessarily. He gets and techs, or not techs, he uses his gas for roaches a little too early. From that, Protoss can get a tech advantage that way. Um, sometimes. It, it, there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, there is, especially with the timing of gas, not just from Protoss, but from Zerg as well. Now, Chef does have his three hatcheries, and he's joining it pretty nicely, getting the Roachworn and Evo Chamber pretty standard times thus far. Uh, he also has a pretty good scout seeing everything. He also, uh, one thing to really note is to catch the the Chrono Boosts. If you can see that he's Chrono Boosting his plus one really quickly, That's exactly then right. you can start seeing uh, when something to be feared. But look at this from Puzzle. Going up to six more additional gates, maybe even an eighth gate 
Now, we've seen some crazy eight gates in the past where you can attack with Zealous Sentry and completely destroy your opponent with some crazy, crazy amount of units. And that looks like what Puzzle's gonna go for. Is Shath gonna be prepared for this? It's tough to call. There are no sentries out, so there's no buildup of force field. What, um, what Puzzle's trying to do is just all in aggression. Right, just sheer amounts of units at such an early time. No chrono boost was really al allocated to this forge. It was actually to probe, so he was looking to get a really huge economy oh, yeah. super fast and then pump off of all of these gateways. Sheth was able to see that based on the saturation of probes in that natural, so that's why he's making such a big call to make all these units. He sees the pylon out here, has no creep spread and no glial reconstitution. That yeah. will be a little troubling. We'll see if Sheth can actually hold <coughs> this off. Not it's even a lair. Very tight. Yeah, Sheth doesn't even have a lair up. He's working speeds by the face. He's going to try to defend with Roche Ling. Now, the big thing with 8 gate is that you don't really have much time to invest in sentries because it's supposed to hit so quick that you don't have the time to build up with the energy. We see Sheth engaging immediately directly with the Stalkers and Zealots. Now, the Roaches are going for a flank, but this is actually not enough Roaches to really jeopardize the Stalker count. You can see more Zealots and Stalkers are warping in. Now, Zel uh, Zerglings with speed will be the ones trying to see if they can change the balance of the battle. But with a huge amount of warpins, look at that puzzle with non-stop warpins. And these pawns are only advancing closer to Chef. Now, it's really important that the Zerglings actually go around the Zealots. You don't want to be engaging Zerglings on Zealots. Force the Stalkers to back up completely, and then you can start kiting the Zealots very efficiently with your Roaches. At this point, all Chef wants to do is start massing up units, eliminate the Zealots, and then it's Stalker. Stalker is against Ze uh, Zergling Roach. That's a great composition to be going against. Just mass Stalker without Blink. Yeah, and you can see that uh, Puzzle really does not want to push forward because he saw how many Zerglings with speed. He does not want to get caught out of position. A great uh, little position that we see from Puzzle. As you can oh see God. that nothing can really come from the natural, and the Zells are engaging directly onto the Zergling, and the Stalkers are clogging the natural ramp, preventing any kind of surrounds whatsoever. But, I mean, Puzzle Supply is still climbing up slowly. Sheth's still staying strong, and over time, the Stalker count will just get so big that it'll be overwhelmingly hard for Sheth to do, uh, mount any kind of defense. As you can see, now the Queen's getting into the battle. The third, if it drops, that'll be so critical to the survival of Sheth. Oh, man. Is this enough here from Sheth to hold it off? I don't think it is. Additional Roaches are waddling on over. Actually, no, there's a lot of units over here that aren't being used, but it doesn't matter. The Stalkers and Zealots are in position already. The third base is under attack, and it looks like it will go down as well, unless Chef can do something pretty dramatic mm. here. He is coming in from behind, and he might be able to hold off here, but another warping of units will seal the deal, I think. I'm not sure. Oh my god, the oh. Stalker count is actually thinning out. Yeah, the flank from the top of the ramp. Patience from Sheth is the name of the game. As you see, that puzzle is running back forth. But Sheth's supply is dropping significantly. Keep in mind that he just drones at the third. We're cleaned up, so he doesn't have the same economy as he has, nor does he have the same larva production. So if Puzzle can hold out as long as he doesn't lose every single Stalker, it's still a very relevant rush. You can see Sheth immediately starting another queen at his third. Glio Reconstitution finally beginning, but without uh, the huge amount of roaches, he can't really do anything. Oh, Puzzle also has one sentry for a force field, and he locks the roaches in, forcing an engagement. But the third is already down. Sheth is in oh, a terrible no. position. And it looks like for the first time with this next warp in, I think Sheth will be behind in supply. Uh, mm. The efficiency of these stalkers have been pretty good, killing the third. And now, I mean, Sheth doesn't even have tech to back up into Holy this. Holy smokes. 15 kills on one stalker, 8 kills on a stalker, 10 kills on another stalker. This is absurd, just watching the amount of kills that Puzzle's been able to do. And these Stalkers haven't necessarily even been that vulnerable. Most of them are still full health. With full shields, we can see Sheth uh, moving it with Zerglings, trying to see if he can go for a flank and approach. Now, the big thing is he did take out one pylon. The second pylon has still been there for reinforcements. Uh -oh. Sheth trying to hold his natural, trying to go for a surround. He does pick off some of those Zelds, and the Stalkers kind of get surrounded. But the worry about the worry is at the main here. We see the Zelds going on to the Queens, and Sheth can't afford to lose any more Queens here. Oh, and this is so unfortunate. Zealots are just in such a fantastic position going to town on those roaches. There is no counterattack. There is nothing out for Chef. Unfortunately for him, he will drop the first game. The drones are finally going to engage, but the natural is cleaned up. The third base is cleaned up. What mm. more can he do from here? Oh, man. Chef losing way too much economy. Now down 25 drones. You can see he's still pumping units uh, diligently, but he doesn't have that much traction whatsoever. Every roach that pops out and tries to stop the onslaught of the base gets dropped immediately. You see the Evo Chamber now also uh, has fallen. 
And when Shet's natural drops, yeah, that will be curtain calls as you can see that the momentum is completely in favor of Protoss. As Puzzle's been staying at this 60 to 70 supply range the entire time, Shep was at 100, now down to the mid 50s. And with that hatchery dropping, Shep's production has been cut from three hatcheries just to one. After losing his third and his natural, way too much damage to sustain. Because even if, for some reason, Shep stabilizes, uh, it's two base versus one. Yeah, I think Shep is just trying to maybe wear out his opponent. I'm not sure. But it will, it's, it's current calls pretty much. Now he moves up into the main. Additional um, reinforcements coming in here for Puzzle. But the roaches are being followed and uh, targeted down. Mm, yeah, just targeting down the spine crawler. Shaft is unable to really do anything. The last of his forces uh, being minced by the Zells. You can see the Queen has been also uh, targeted as well with no more real forms of production and nothing left to defend the middle line. Shaft has run out of options completely. And, uh, you know, I mean, he's going to, again, Wait, he's going to hold this off. <laughs> Three stalkers going down right here. Can he make a comeback? Uh, <laughs> yeah, off of uh, one base against two base of Protoss. It's going to be really I tough. Wish. I love um, Chef, man. I wish he could come back from this. Yeah, but I wish all the best. But, uh, puzzle, puzzle has such a, a dominant control, and it's cool because Puzzle is also preparing, you know, just a, f a minor follow-up just in case he has his Twilight Council. Blink will start, and if he gets enough gas, maybe in plus two. But uh, Puzzle Puzzle's done everything right in terms of controlling, making sure Zells are always in the front, and making sure to keep his Stalkers alive. You can see the meticulous control uh, with those Stalkers proved to be way too efficient as uh, Puzzle climbing up such a big supply lead, 70 to 47. It's just such a shame. Um... Yeah, like what, what what should Chef have done? You felt in, actually. In do that we have situation? an instant replay of that? Um, no. There it is. GG. Never mind. <laughs> All right, GG from Thanks, Chef. As we see, uh, game number one goes to Puzzle. And congratulations to him. Now I want to talk about the positioning of the stalkers and zealots. Remember what I said? You want the stalkers to engage against the zerglings. Mm -hmm. The main reason for that is. Well, stalkers do 11 damage to zerglings. How, many, how much uh, life 10. does a zergling oh, have? Oh, yeah, sorry, 11 with a plus one. 11. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 with a plus one. 11, yes. you're right. Um, so still four shots to kill a zergling. It's four yeah. shots. Yes. But more importantly, that's 44 damage mm -hmm. done to a 35 hit point zergling. Mm -hmm. So what you've done is decrease the effectiveness of a stalker. If it's just stalker against zergling, well, mm -hmm. they're actually reducing the amount of damage. So that plus one is actually negated as well. But the, z the, zealot the zealot is completely it's different. Yeah, it's two shots. It's two shots with mm -hmm. a zealot against a zergling. So if you're able to target those um, stalkers with just the zerglings, you're really cost efficient. And then, of course, you can back away anytime you want because you're on creep. And not only that, you're much faster than zealots. Zealots, though, if they back up, those roaches are going to give chase very easily. So if you can segment that somehow, you're in a great position. The great thing about Puzzle is he just clamped down on that ramp, the big ramp outside of the third base. Just stayed right there and poked with a couple of stalkers saying, come at me. And now all of a sudden, zealots will always be in position for those zerglings. The zerglings can never isolate the stalkers alone. And uh, he was able to have a very cost efficient trade when the big battle actually ensued. Let's take a quick, let's take a closer look at uh, the important moment of the game. You can see the initial charge here right here from Puzzle, and yeah, you can just see. Just staying here is such an important thing to do. Just blocking the ramp, making sure that the surround, and he's also got the pylon in great position so he can warp in immediately in case the stalkers ever get flanked. And you know, a lot of Protosses would run past that and try to go behind the middle line, something silly like that. And Puzzle showing, again, great patience. So these Zerglings right here should have actually went for the stalkers, even though the, the count is pretty low, but you can already see like it looked like Sheth was starting to stabilize a little bit but as soon as he grabs that position over there he's really really nice now going off a creep I would say is not a good thing but those zerglings running up right there they should actually have stayed back stayed down uh, and, and just went for a, a potential type of surround but now the army composition is starting to build Sheth is supply capped right here he's at 94 out of 94 and uh, everything's not looking too good. So Sheth knew. You see the Zerglings? They're not trying to engage right there. Yeah, he doesn't want it. Yeah, he wants to engage against the Stalkers. But it was really rough. So, yeah. Puzzle takes game number one on Shakur's Plateau. We'll find out what's going to happen in game number two for our lovable American Zerg. Find out after this commercial break. Thank you so much to GameMinder, the smartphone map that lets you know about upcoming NSL broadcasts, as well as maybe even the Sunday showdown happening later tonight. Don't go anywhere. Game number two is happening right after this.